Thanks for the kind introduction, and thanks for having me here today. So it's my great pleasure to be here to share some of our latest research on efficient 3D perception for autonomous vehicles. And autonomous vehicles are capable of handling very complicated scenarios like this shown in the video. It can recognize cars in a very crowded parking lot and also understand how the other cars um, and people behave to react properly. So, Autonomous systems are usually composed of multiple steps, like the perception, prediction, planning, and runaway control. In this talk, we will focus on the very first step in the autonomous system, which is the 3D perception. So what is 3D perception? 3D perception is essentially the eyes for the autonomous cars. And the input to the 3D perception is the sensory data, such as the multi-view cameras, the LiDAR point clouds, and also some other sensory data as well, like radar, uh, even event camera as well. So based on these inputs, the goal of the 3D perception is essentially to understand the environment surrounding the car. For instance, to detect uh, the other objects in the scene, uh, like the cars, the trucks, pedestrians, these detections have to be happened in, in, in the 3D space because we not only care about the object's position in the 2D image uh, space, but also care about their 3D locations and also their distance. Uh, to the car. And in addition to the dynamic objects, we might also be interested in understanding the scene layout, for example, to parse the drivable areas, the lane dividers, and so on and so forth. So with the development of the deep learning and neural networks, the accuracy of the 3D perception has been significantly improved over the past few years. So here you can see uh, it's a trend of the 3D detection score on the new scenes, uh, 3D object detection benchmark since early 2019. And over the past uh, around four years, the detection accuracy is improved from merely 45% to above 75%. So this is like a 30% abs absolute improvement. <coughs> However, the improved accuracy comes at the cost of increased computation as well. So on the left-hand side, I have listed uh, a few uh, models from the latest YOLO V8 series. So these are efficient. Uh, 2D detection models targeting real-time de deployment. Well, on the right-hand side, we can clearly see uh, here basically a few models for the 3D perception models. You can clearly see that there are a huge gap in the computation between the 2D and 3D detectors, sometimes more than one or two orders of magnitude difference. So this raises a huge challenge on the efficiency side for the 3D perception models and which will be the main focus of this talk, how we can make the 3D perception model more efficient. So in this talk, I will start by introducing the Fusion, which is a 3D perception framework that can efficiently and effectively support multiple sensors and handle multiple tasks. And next, I will give a brief overview of our latest works, Platformer and Sparse BIT. They accelerate the LiDAR and camera backbones using the sparsity uh, techniques for 3D perception. And finally, I will demonstrate how we have deployed our work in an autonomous racing vehicle and also a full-scale autonomous car. So let's begin with the BEV Fusion. Self-driving vehicles are equipped with numerous sensors for better robustness. For example, the most commonly used sensors are cameras, LIDARs, and radars. You can see there are more than 10, 10 cameras mounted on the car and also having four LIDARs and six radars. Different, uh, different types of sensors have different characteristics and providing different types of signals. One significant challenge for the multi-sensor fusion is the view discrepancy between different sensory data. For example, the camera features are captured in the camera view, the perspective view, while the LiDAR and radar data are usually in the 3D or in the bird's eye view. So the view discrepancy makes the feature fusion very difficult because if you think about the same location in different feature representation, they are actually corresponding to entirely different spatial locations. Let's take a look at, for example, the top left corner of each of the camera, they are clearly not corresponding to the same 3D spatial locations. So in this case, we cannot do like a naive, elegant-wise uh, feature fusion. And therefore, like a key, um, like the goal of the sensory fusion is actually to find a shared representation so that uh, we can easily convert uh, the, all the other sensory data to this space without a lot of loss of uh, accurate information. And also, it is suitable for different types of 3D perception tasks. 
not only 3D detection, but also for other semantic tasks as well. So one approach uh, is to project the LiDAR point cloud to the camera plane, and then we can generate like a 2.5D sparse like, uh, depth map, and then we can, uh, we can concatenate it with the original uh, RGB image, and then we can utilize any camera-based models to process it. So it's a very simple like, um, paradigm, but the problem of that is the conversion from the um, LiDAR to camera is actually geometrically lossy. I circle all the few regions in this visualized depth map, and we can see that within each of the circle, uh, there are points from, uh, with very different depth values. So this will result in a loss of information of the true 3D structure of the scene, making it fairly hard to, to detect and localize the objects. And, and because of that, actually most of the state-of-the-art sensor fusion models take another approach, goes the other direction by uh, like de decorating the lineup points with their corresponding camera features. However, this camera to lineup projection is semantically lossy as the camera and lineup features have drastically different densities. Only less than 5% of the camera features are actually matched to like the lineup point. You can see from the visualization here, all the red points are actually those uh, like camera points that have a match in the, in the lineup point cloud. This will limit the model's performance on the semantic oriented task like VEV maps and location. Also, another thing we can notice here is the top right corner of this visualization is basically empty. It's not covered by a LiDAR sensor. That's actually because like different sensors, the LiDAR sensors have very limited cover, like range coverage. And using this type of sensor fusion will like uh, drop the information captured by the dense uh, camera sensor. So that's def definitely not optimal. So in this project, we adopt uh, the bird's eye view as a unified representation, though that we use the bird's eye view representation as a common ground between the camera and LiDAR uh, space. So this view is friendly to almost all the 3D perception tasks because their output space is usually also in the bird's eye view. And more importantly, the transformation to the bird's eye view uh, keeps the both, both the geometric structure and, uh, and the semantic density we'll see in, in a minute. So converting the LiDAR feature to the bird's eye view is really simple. We just need to flatten the point cloud along the height dimen uh, dimension. And you can see from the visualization here, you can still recognize that's a car even after the flattening process. So this captures the geometric structure fairly well. For the camera features, we project all six cameras onto the unified uh, bird's eye view space. You can see here different region of the BEV feature map correspond to the different uh, cameras. Uh, having different orientations, and finally we can just simply do like the element-wise fusion to 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 have uh, and, and perform the perception task. So implementation-wise, we given different sensor uh, inputs. We first apply a modality-specific encoders to extract their features, and then we transform all these features into a unified perceptive space. And once all the features have been converted to the space, we can stack them together and then apply a BV encoder to fuse the features together. And in the final step, we apply multiple task-specific paths to the fused BV uh, feature map. And our method can be applied to most 3D perception tasks, like 3D detection and map simulations. So most of the components in this pipeline is fairly straightforward, but the, but the tricky part here is how to convert the, uh, the, the feature from the camera space to the bird's eye view space. So that's called the camera to bird's eye view transformation. So to give you an uh, like in intuition, so the process is basically to convert the image capture from the camera, for example, something like that from a street view image, to a bird's eye, top-down bird's eye view map. It's like the satellite image you will get from the Google map. So this step involves doing some depth estimation, passing the point out to the 3D, and do some cooling. So surprisingly, this step is actually the bottleneck, efficiency bottleneck of the whole pipeline. So like the, with the vanilla implementation, it takes around 500 milliseconds to run this single operator. And it could take up to 83% of the total runtime of the 3D perception models. So in this project, we proposed a few uh, optimizations, including the interval reduction that converts the pre -sum fix, uh, prefix sum like, uh, reduction into an interval reduction that could, with a specialized good kernel implementation. And that can accelerate this uh, operator by a factor of 0.2. And then we further accelerate the process using a pre-computation 
and getting another two times speed up. So as a result, our implementation achieved a 40-fold speed up and reducing the runtime of this operator from 83% to nearly 5%. But now let's move on to the uh, evaluation part. So here is a demo video of the BV Fusion running on the new things for the 3D object detection and BV map segmentation. So you can see from this qualitative result, the BV Fusion model is able to recognize different objects fairly accurately and also parse the scene output fairly accurately. And some quantitative numbers here, a lot of numbers, but the key takeaway is the BV Fusion can achieve at least 1% higher accuracy while reducing the computation cost by, by two times. And the same applies to the BV map segmentation where we achieve even higher accuracy boost than the, chem, uh, than the Fusion models with a 13.6% higher MIOU. And we have also studied the effectiveness of our model under different line of sparsity. So the reason why this setting is very uh, very interesting is sparser lidars could be cheaper, and therefore they can be more affordable in the real production. For example, a full beam lidar sensor costs only a few thousand dollars. BV Fusion brings larger improvements for the sparser lidar, as you can see in this uh, figure. For one beam lidar, it outperforms the previous baseline by 12%. And this is because in the case where the lidar is very sparse, the point decoration uh, method will drop almost all the camera features, which is clearly not effective. A radon can also be seen as a sparser variant of LiDAR as well. So here we also compared our BV fusion with other like camera radar fusion method, including center fusion, filter 3D, and also craft here. And we can clearly see that the BV fusion can achieve the same level of detection accuracy while for the velocity estimation, the error, is, error rate is much lower than all the other baselines. And it's important to see that our BV Fusion is at least three times faster than any other baselines, and making it most friendly for actual deployment on the hardware. And recently, we have also deployed the very model on the Jetson HX R-Ring and achieved real-time inference speed. And our model ran first on the new things through <coughs> detection benchmark, 3D object tracking benchmark, the Waymo detection benchmark, and also the Agrovis 3D object detection benchmark. And we have open sourced a code for our BV Fusion on GitHub. So feel free to check it out if you're interested. So that concludes the first part about the BV Fusion. So there are two main takeaways here. Firstly, the bird's eye view is, a, is an ideal space for multi-task, multi-sensor fusion, supporting different tasks, supporting different, handling different sensor, sensor data. And secondly, view transformation plays a crucial role in terms of the efficiency and should be properly accelerated. And the next uh, project I would like to share is the flat polymer. So let's first revisit the latency breakdown of the original BV fusion model. So this is a breakdown after our, our optimization for the view transformation module. And you can see that the view transformation now only takes around 10% uh, of the total runtime. The latency bottleneck after our optimization becomes the LiDAR encoder, which takes like 43% of the total runtime, and that's what, we're, what we will be focusing on up next. So this is a 3D detection benchmark on the new things leaderboard. It might not be very obvious to tell from the name of these methods, but these highlighted methods are all based on sparse convolutions to build your LiDAR encoders. So let's first understand what sparse convolution. Conceptually, it's very similar to the dense convolution being applied to the sparse data. So one key difference between the sparse convolution and the dense convolution is basically like sparse convolution will skip the computation for the zero neighbors, while for the dense convolution it will basically compute all of them. So for this particular example, the dense, conv uh, the dense convolution, uh, convolution will compute all, uh, have a matrix modification for all nine neighbors, while for the sparse convolution, it will only execute uh, two of them. And the second difference you have probably noticed uh, from the visualization here is the output sparsity pattern is different. So for dense convolution, an output is zero as long as one of its neighbors is zero. Uh, is, uh, is zero in the, is not zero in the input. While for the sparse convolution, an output is non zero only if it's like non zero also in the input. So you can see that that's actually from the practical 
uh, consideration because that way we can keep the same level of sparsity across the model so we can use the sparsity to accelerate the model. So the support of the sparse convolution is actually non-trivial as we need to write specialized kernels for it on GPUs. This is because these sparse operators are not favored by GPUs. So in our group, we have built a library called TorSparse to help resolve this issue. So this API is very similar to like native PyTorch, and as you can see from the right-hand side, for the model definition, you only need to replace the like and then count 2D, batch on 2D in PyTorch with our TSNN count and TSNN batch mode. And another difference is you need to use the sparse tensor instead of using dense tensors. And other than this, the usage of the tensor and models are exactly the same as what you will expect in the PyTorch. And you can use it for forward and backward paths as if it's just a PyTorch model. The library is highly optimized compared with the leading solutions, Minkowski Engine and SPCOM. Our torch bars can achieve 1.8 to 3.3 times uh, speed up for inference and up to four times speed up for the training as well. Although torch bars achieve very high performance, you could probably imagine that it requires a lot of engineering efforts. It becomes very challenging if you want to support more types of hardware, like later generation of NVIDIA GPUs or even G GPUs other than NVIDIA GPUs. So the question we keep asking ourselves is that, is it possible to redefine the computation and reuse all the efforts people have already spent for dense workloads? That's why we started to uh, look at the point cloud transformers. So transformers have demonstrated re remarkable performance in the 2D computer vision. Many pioneering efforts attempt to apply transformers to the point cloud domain as well. They have achieved remarkable accuracy. However, the latency is still lag far behind, up to four, four times lower uh, than the strong sparse convolution based on I have just introduced. The vanilla global point cloud transformers apply The vanilla global point cloud transformer applies <laughs> self-attention self oh, okay. Okay. globally across the entire point cloud. So it's very simple, it's very like, uh, like a vanilla vision transformer, it's global transformer. But its runtime grows quadratically, uh, quadratically uh, as the number of points grows, and therefore not scalable. And recently, researchers have also explored the idea of window-based uh, point cloud transformers, which is very similar to the swing transformers. That applies the like, self-attention to a set of you know, overlapping windows. However, different from 2D images, the number of points varies across windows and can differ by like, two orders of magnitude. Therefore, these models usually suffer from like, the padding and also like, partition overhead. So to resolve this issue, we propose a platformer to improve the efficiency of the window-based point cloud transformer. So the key idea is we, uh, to redefine the grouping strategy. So instead of partitioning the points in a spatially regular way, we partition the points in a computationally regular way. So you can see from the left-hand side, for the original window-based point cloud transformers, you will partition the point in a unified two-by-two two like windows. While for our like, platformer-based uh, partitioning strategy, you can see after the partitioning, we'll have equal size like, for each group. So that's actually a preferred uh, for the computation from the uh, computation perspective. To achieve the equal size grouping, we use a window-based sorting to flatten the point out uh, from the 3D to a uh, 1D sequence. So we sort all the points first by the window coordinates and then by the local coordinates within the window. So this way we can better preserve the geometric locality and we also use like window shifting using the swing transformer and also we propose to, to alternate the sorting axis to promote the feature exchange across different windows and across different directions. So platformer can directly benefit from existing system optimizations for the transformers. Changing the grouping strategy from equal window grouping to equal size grouping can directly accelerate the model to around 20 milliseconds. With flash attention and efficient transformer implementation that fuses all attention operators into one single GPU kernel, the latency of our model can be improved by a factor of 1.7 times. 
And we did a few more optimizations, including like packing the linear projections into a batch one, fusing the linear activation together, and finally also dropping the loss residual group. Combining all of these together, we are able to achieve around another three, three, three times speed up over the vanilla implementation. In our model closes with all of the algorithm and system side innovations, our model is able to close the three to the four times latency gap between the point cloud transformers and the sparse convolution models. It's much faster than the center point, and it's also slightly faster than the strong center point plus plus baseline. So equal size grouping is ideal for computational regularity, but not really for the spatial regularity. With the window-based sorting, most groups are spatially <coughs> local. So you can still see from some examples here that uh, there are some outliers in the grouping. But the attention mechanism is powerful enough to learn to suppress these outlier points. And finally, we have deployed our reflectformer on NVIDIA JSON AJX Ori, and our model is the first point cloud transformer that could achieve the real-time inference on the edge GPUs. All right, so that concludes the second part on the platformer. So two takeaways here. First, the computational regularity is far more important than spatial regularity. And second, the efficient implementation is very important to explore the full potential of transformers. And then I will give a quick uh, high-level overview of our uh, sparse VIT work. So let's get back to the latency, go back to the latency breakdown again for the 3D perception model. So other than the LiDAR encoder, another latency bottleneck is actually the camera encoder, taking around 32% of the runtime. But why is the camera encoder slow? The resolution is actually the key. The increased image resolution offers great detail and also giving much higher uh, detection accuracy. However, this comes at the cost of meaningfully growing computational complexity, making it less deployable on the resource constraint applications. So therefore, it's very important to design an algorithm to efficiently and also effectively process the high resolution images. The simplest solution to, to, to resolve this is to downsample the image to a lower resolution. But this will actually drop the fine details captured from the high resolution sensor. And the missing information will bottleneck the model's performance, like uh, especially for some small object detection and for some dense prediction tasks like semantic segmentation. So our motivation is that dropping details uniformly at all positions is suboptimal because not all pixels are equally important. For example, you can see here, for the two images, they're having exactly the same amount of pixel. But it's obvious that the sparse high-resolution input uh, at the bottom is more informative than the dense high-resolution ones at the top. So motivated by this, a very natural idea is to skip computation for less important regions. So we proposed the sparse UIT to explore the window activation pruning for vision transformers. So the high-level idea here is to prune the activation in a blockwise manner so that it can, can be better accelerated on the hardware. And the pruning is based on a simple L2 magnitude scoring. And another design here is we choose different sparsity ratios for different layers as different layers have different sparsity, uh, like different sensor sensitivities. And we, we proposed some algorithms to fastly evaluate the accuracy of, uh, of the model under different sparsity configuration and use the evolutionary search to help us find the best configuration. And the model can achieve 1.5 times speed up compared with the baseline model, and it's also providing a much better accuracy latency trade-off compared with the baselines with reduced resolution or just with reduced width. And it also performs similarly on the 2D instant sensation on the COVID data set. So let's take a look at the pruning strategy given by our sparse VIT. So these are the original images. And the model learns to prune those background pixels while keeping those object pixels. For example, here you can see, it keeps those pixels for the pedestrians and for the cars. And with a more aggressive pruning ratio, sparse VIT learns to keep what matters the most. For example, here it keeps the barriers and the cars because these are actually the classes included in the nuisance detection uh, benchmark. So this is a very brief overview of sparse VIT. So two takeaways here. So first, not all pixels are equally important. 
the importance of the pixel is actually uh, is it's actually task specific. For object detection, we might care more about the like foreground pixels, but for map segmentation, we might care about those background pixels. So the, the definition of the importance should be learned automatically with the model. Secondly, sparse high resolution features are more informative than the advanced low resolution ones. So that means pruning the activation of sparse can be more effective than directly downsampling the image uniformly. And finally, the most relaxing part of this talk, the deployment. So this is a video of autonomous racing vehicle of MIT travelers running on the track uh, of the Formula Student Germany competition. And the goal of the competition is to build an autonomous system to drive the car uh, along the track fast and safely. So with the engineers at MIT Travelers, we have deployed our models on their cars and replaced their original um, pipeline. So here's a video comparing the performance of MIT Travelers' original pipeline and also our model. And we can see their original model is uh, giving a fairly good accuracy of 95%, while our model pushes the accuracy to around 99%, while reducing the latency from 40 milliseconds to two milliseconds, and also increasing the perception range. So this allows the car to see further and drive faster and safer. Apart from the racing car, we have also deployed our like, algorithms and systems onto a full-scale autonomous vehicle. And here you can see a demo here. We evaluate the car on the full-scale uh, uh, full vehicle in the real world using our LiDAR perception model. And you can see the, the car is able to drive purely based on our model fairly smoothly on the track. And we have also tested its performance on the navigation. So basically, you will give the model uh, like a navigation map so the model should learn to turn left, turn right, or go straight according to the input. And finally, we have also tested the robustness of our model and there are some unexpected events, for example, sensor failure. And our model is able to recover from the unexpected like uh, sensor failure scenarios. All right, so that's all I have for today, and I'm happy to take questions if you have any. Thank you.